All right, if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired of not showing up as your true, aligned, authentic self because you're being hijacked by your own insecurities and you are just done with it, then my friend, listen up. Today's episode is gonna be a big one. Hello and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and today is going to be a great day, but not in the way that you are used to me sharing great days with you. Today is a day when realization and awareness is going to dawn for you. This is one of those moments in time when you have a realization that you cannot go back from. And this realization is not new to you. This realization is something that you have known in your bones and in your body and in the back of your mind for a very long time. Something that you've been too afraid to actually look at. It is our responsibility as healthcare providers to heal our own traumas. Because hurting doctors hurt their patients. Hurting parents hurt their children. Hurting leaders hurt their team. It's undeniable. And I'm not coming on here to shame or to villainize. I'm coming on here today in this episode to raise the flag of awareness because we need to be done with this. It's time that we recognized as healthcare providers the imperative we have to heal our traumas and to take care of ourselves, of our emotional and mental well-being because if we don't, we are hurting people. This weekend, I had the privilege of meeting a wonderful woman. I was at an incredible event, women's empowerment event, where I have met some phenomenal women doing really audacious things in this world and making big strides, huge impact in their communities. Now, all of this outside of the medical and dental world, by the way. And uh, I was talking to somebody and she was actually standing up voicing her experience. And the conversation was about our own healing. And she was standing up very proud of her own healing. And she shared this beautiful story of a tattoo she got, her first tattoo. Actually, I'm not sure it was her first, but I think it was her first one that she was able to actually complete. And you'll you'll understand why as I tell the story. She had her first completed tattoo. It wasn't very big. Just a beautiful saying on her arm. And this was a celebration and a recognition of her growth. Why? Because for her entire life, she has had a deep fear of needles. And the way this translated was she would get orthostatic hypertension, vasovagal response every time she had blood drawn. So for any reason that she needed to in her life, anytime a needle was necessary and, you know, I'm assuming also with dentistry, I didn't ask her about her dental history, but anytime she needed blood drawn, she would faint. She had this intense body reaction that overcame her and she would faint. So much fear. And so, of course, she she couldn't get tattoos. And the reason why she was standing up and sharing this story is because she was celebrating her own growth in healing her own traumas. So this work that I teach, this work that is so integral to our own healing, she has been embarking on over the past few years. And so she was celebrating how different she is as a person because she learned how to regulate her nervous system, learned how to heal those traumas, and she was able to actually have blood drawn for she needed some allergy testing. She couldn't believe it. She was so excited about how she advocated for herself and found a way through this pain that had just been, you know, haunting her for her whole life, that she it was limiting her in so many ways, that she celebrated with a tattoo. And when she was sharing this growth, 
she also mentioned what triggered this series of events in her life, the trauma that she was able to identify at a very young age. And what had happened was she was in a doctor's office and needed to have, I think, an injection. I don't know what she was getting. And the doctor said, are you ready? And she said, no. And he went ahead and did it anyway. And in that moment, robbed her of her authority over her own body. The trauma, the the imprinting of that traumatic event followed her for the rest of her life. We're talking about a woman now in her 40s who has children. That trauma followed her for 30 plus years, that one moment. And she was sharing it with us as her recognition of when this happened and how she's been healing since then and the steps she had taken. And immediately I got emotional as I'm getting emotional again here right now because I identified with that doctor. Not one of us wakes up in the morning saying, I'm going to be a doctor that hurts people. I really don't think so. I think that there are very, 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 very few outliers in this statement that I'm making. Not one of us gets up in the morning and says, today I'm going to be a terrible doctor. Today I'm going to be a terrible dentist. Today I'm going to hurt somebody. Today I'm going to be terrible to my kids. Not one of us wakes up that way. But the traumas that we have suffered in our lives The limiting beliefs, the fears and anxieties and insecurities, the trauma that lives in our bodies is what impacts our actions. I felt so deeply for that doctor because I have been there. I don't think I've ever given anyone an injection without their their consent. But as I was sitting there, I was thinking, how, how have I harmed my patients in times when I was at my max stress level, when I was at my deepest burnout, when I was feeling my most insecure, when I was feeling worthless and not worthy of the work I was doing or not worthy of, you know, the craft I was expert at, not worthy as a mom. I mean, it doesn't matter any component of your life, when my marriage was suffering, when I was in those dark moments, were there times where I inadvertently hurt? You know, we take an oath. We take an oath of do no harm. But really, do you understand in the depths of your core what that means? Can you honestly say that by ignoring your own health your own mental and emotional health, that you're not defying that oath? It isn't possible. It isn't possible when you're in so much pain to not hurt people around you. It isn't possible. When you're in pain, your actions are not well thought out. They're not in alignment with your higher self. It's biology. When your body is in fight or flight, you cannot access those executive functions. You cannot access compassion to the same extent. You cannot access intellect, creativity, creative and ingenuitive problem solving. It's not possible. We get really good at our craft from practicing it over and over and over again. So, you know, 20 years into your career, you're probably doing a good good job of it and you can almost go offline, right? It's almost like driving. We go offline after a while. It becomes rote. You carry out the motions. And we become blind to how we're impacting the world around us. We become blind to the way we speak to our patients, to our team, to our family, to the people we love most, the way we speak to ourselves. It becomes habituated reactivity. And when a patient walks in with their own dental trauma, it triggers us immediately. 
And if we don't have the tools, if you do not have the practices of how to soothe and care for yourself in those moments, I am willing to say that you are negatively impacting your environment because I was there myself. I never once woke up saying, today I'm going to hurt somebody. Today I'm going to do something to somebody that is going to impact their lives for 30 years. And it's virtually impossible not to when you are in a dysregulated state. When you are thinking, literally lying to yourself, that you are the martyr, that you're the only one suffering. We can't keep going on like this. We can't keep telling ourselves that the only person who's suffering is me. I'm exhausted every day. I'm not getting enough sleep. I'm really burnt out. My boss doesn't give me um, value or autonomy. And I'm miserable in the job that I'm in. I'm miserable because I've noticed that I'm almost a little resentful of my patients. I'm a little resentful of my team. I feel like my job is taking me away from my family. If those are thoughts in your head, they are impacting the way you behave. Done. That's it. That's the truth. We can't keep denying this. We can't keep sending these incredible, beautiful men and women to dental and medical school and not providing them with the tools they need to be their best selves for the people they serve. We didn't come into this profession without a deep desire to heal, to nurture our patients. That's what drew me to this profession. Also in terms of business and entrepreneurship and leadership, we don't come into leadership saying, I'm going to be a a jerk. No, we come in feeling like we're going to lead with empowerment. How can I make a difference? How can I lead a team to my best capability? And if you're leading a team and you're burnt out and working through lunch and stressed out and thinking about work in the middle of the night and finding you can't be present with your children at home that night, guess what? Your actions are hurting your team. It's impossible not to. There is no such thing as martyrdom without collateral damage. There just isn't. And I know this <laughs> This seems really heavy right now if you're listening to this, and I'm not intending for this to add shame to you. And of course, I experienced that myself. Deep shame once I recognized, oh, wait a minute. I'm not all that. Here I thought I was just doing my best for everyone and denying myself, taking care of everyone else in the world and not taking care of myself because I was being so good to everyone. And when I realized, oh, wait a minute, in doing so, I actually was hurting people. Whew, shame felt heavy. But I'm giving you some insight to allow you to see that on the other side of it is enormous empowerment because you are a great healer. You have everything you need in your arsenal, in your education to be an incredible healer and healthcare provider and leader and parent. It's all there within you. There is nothing wrong with you, but it is imperative that you take care of yourself first. That's it. That's it. If you're exhausted, take days off. If you're exhausted, put implement moments in your day, put it in your schedule of when you're going to take breaks during the day and learn how to nurture your nervous system, your body. We went to medical and dental school. We know about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And guess what? We are, we are still human. They still apply to us. It blows my mind how as healthcare providers, we preach these things to our patients and we do not take our own advice. How many TMJ patients have you told to implement a better bedtime routine so that they're not going to bed, clenching, telling them to stay off their devices? And how many of us are on our devices? How many of you are on your devices? How many of you are supporting your patients with you know, nutrition advice, and you're eating crap. 
How many are talking to their patients about yoga and relaxing? I mean, I can't tell you how many patients I would tell you should really consider meditation, taking that stress off of your life, especially those TMD patients where, you know, we just, we the occlusion was beautiful. Maybe we've done Botox in their masseters and still they're taking their stress out on their teeth. And guess what? We are not following that advice. It is imperative to understand not just your mindset. And this is one of the biggest problems I have with coaching right now is it's very mindset heavy. And mindset is so important. Hell, I'm a transformational mindset coach. But mindset cannot land unless you are treating the nervous system. And I will tell you right now, having experienced myself, dentistry and medicine is one of the most sympathetic nervous system activating professions that exists. That is why we have these drastic statistics every now and then about suicide rate and anxiety and depression. Because we entrench ourselves all day in sympathetic nervous system activation and there is another way. We can take care of ourselves and still be in the profession, but it requires a responsibility. It requires us in our profession to wake up and realize I can't keep taking care of everyone else. I have to. It's my responsibility. It is my oath that I took, the Hippocratic oath to do no harm. It requires me to take care of myself. Imagine if in dental and medical school we had a class on how to take care of yourself, your own emotional and nervous system, and mental well-being. Why is that not the primary first course that we learn, the first course that we teach in dental school, and then follow up with it throughout the years as new activations are going to happen, new triggers? I mean, I don't even remember a course on how to deal with patients who had dental trauma. And yet, a majority of our patients do. And those patients are the patients that activate us. It's the patient that yells. It's the patient that cries. It's the patient that screams. It's the patient that is in fear about money that triggers us. It's the patient that writes the Google review that triggers us, that keeps us up at night. And what's so interesting is they are hurting and we are hurting. Just let that land. Just let that sit for a moment. You know, I think we're also have been taught in our education system some techniques and practices that are not respectful of our own values and of our patients. No fault to the profession, but we haven't come very far from pediatric rotations where they taught to slap the patient, to slap the kid. I mean, that wasn't that long ago that that was still being taught. We haven't come that far from papoosing, papoose boarding. In fact, I think there's some, still some programs that teach that. Those are just examples of stripping autonomy and the ability of our patients to speak out about their own bodies. We tell ourselves, oh, it's for their better good, their greater good. And yet I just met this beautiful woman who for 30 years of her life was impacted by a doctor who thought it was for her greater good to just get the needle, even though she said, no, I'm not ready. And so many of our actions are not our fault. Many of the ways that we treat patients or we lead our team or we parent, I'm going to throw that in there too, is learned. Someone once told us that this is the way to do it. You have to do it this way because it's teaching your child accountability. I don't, I don't know, all these stories we have in our heads. But when it's out of alignment with your higher self, that activates your nervous system. When there's something inside of you that says, I really don't feel comfortable with this. Maybe it's in the way recesses of your mind, but you do it anyway because you've been told that that's the right thing to do. That activates your nervous system and already you're in fight or flight, even though you don't realize it. And no wonder we're feeling burnout. Because all day long, we are fighting ourselves with what we think we should, there's that word, should do, versus what we know in our hearts. 
We tell ourselves, well, the schedule is X, Y, Z. I got to get this done by a certain time because there's a patient waiting outside. Guess what's happening? Your nervous system is activated immediately. And once again, I should wrap this up. We should get going here. Once again, what happens? We act out of alignment with our higher selves and it doesn't feel good. And that's when we go home at night and we start thinking about these conversations we've had during the day. Oh my gosh, did I say the right thing? I must have said the right thing. I, d I know I said the right thing. She's a jerk. He's a jerk. And then we start judging. But here's the really interesting thing about judgment. All judgment is self-judgment. If you didn't really care about it, if it wasn't somehow reflecting on an insecurity or a pain inside of you, it wouldn't bother you. And the judgment and the shame steps in when we are acting out of alignment with our higher selves. And here's the incredible news. All of this feels really heavy right now, but here's the most beautiful news. You can heal. You can feel better. You can be in alignment with your higher self. It's possible. You are so much more capable than you give yourself credit for. Right now, you're just giving away your power to happenstance, to circumstances. Well, maybe I hope this job will be better. Maybe this patient will be better. Maybe this team member will be better. We put everything in the hands of those things outside of ourselves and we ignore the incredible power we have within ourselves to heal. And the first step in healing is awareness. And that is where we need to stop lying to ourselves and first have that dawning of awareness that it is our responsibility as healthcare providers to heal our own traumas because hurting doctors hurt their patients. You know, this is such an important component of healthcare that has been completely ignored, that has been completely left behind in terms of our ability to help and heal our patients. And I want us to get angry about it. I want us to get a little bit pissed. I want you to be a little bit pissed. <laughs> I want you to be a little bit angry because it's not your fault. But now that you have awareness, it is your responsibility. So what wounds and traumas have you experienced, it could be from your childhood, it could be from dental school, it could be from an associateship, that you have not given yourself permission to heal? What emotions during the day are you experiencing that you are not allowing yourself to witness and to address? It is not okay to be burnt out as a healthcare provider. It is not okay to be stressed out as a healthcare provider. It is not okay to dread going into work. It is not okay. You deserve to feel better. You deserve to take care of yourself. You deserve and your patients deserve and your team deserves and your children deserve you taking care of yourself. And it can't just be simply mindset, positive affirmations. It's just not good enough. Our bodies are going through too much in our profession. It has to be a component of understanding how your mind and your body works. They're one and the same. They're not separate. Your, ma your head is not separate from your body. They're the same. And we need to understand what's happening in our nervous system and then use our bodies to access calm in our brain, access parasympathetic nervous system so that we can tap into healing and then healing others. Remember, my friends, when you feel good, and I mean feel calm, feel confident, feel healed and whole, like the incredible being that you are, because that is the truth of who you are, that you are whole, you are worthy, you are capable. But when you feel that, and I mean deeply, like a deep knowing in your bones, when you feel that good, that is when you can do good. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Business of Happiness podcast. If this episode brought you new perspective and value, 
I invite you to subscribe so that you catch all upcoming episodes and leave us a review. And if you know of a friend or colleague who could benefit from this perspective, share this episode with them and empower their day. For more information about the Business of Happiness and the Radical Happiness for Practitioners course, find me on www.thebizofhappiness.com. See you there.